Hello everyone, welcome to this video where I'll be showing you how to use Flask Migrate, a Flask extension for managing your database changes through migration files. So in the last few videos, we went through several Python packages as well as Poetry, a Python package manager. So we've used Flask RESTful for building RESTful APIs. We've used python.env for loading your environment variables from a .env file. We've also used Flask SQL Alchemy for working with your database. So Flask SQL Alchemy is an ORM, so it helps you interact with your database quite easily. So without any further ado, let me show you how to use Flask Migrate. So we go to our terminal and we say poetry add Flask Migrate in order to install Flask Migrate. So once that is done, we will head to our project and we will add the extension we just installed. So here we're going to say migrate and we're going to import that from Flask Migrate. So let's import that. Okay, and we're done with our extensions file. So I'm going to head to our my application here and I'm going to do the same thing I did with my database. So I'm going to do migrate. So we're going to import our extension and then we're going to initialize it with our application. So we're going to add app. However, this one needs the database extension as well. So once we add that, I'm going to head to my .env file and here I'm going to say flask app. So here I'm going to say app and this is the location of my, my flask application and it's here for me. If there was a function for creating that, we could have said flask, so we we'll say create app. So let's say in the application file here, we had a function called create app it would know how to find it and create it. And this is needed for Flask Migrate. So I'm going to close this as we don't need this anymore. And what we need to do now is we need to initialize our Flask Migrate folder. So we're going to say Flask DB init. So what this has done is it has created a migrations folder a versions folder within that, and then a couple of other files. For now, you don't need to know anything about those files. So I'm going to close this, and then I am going to open my model. So here I've got my users model. And if we head to our database here, this is our database. And within our tables, we do not have a users table. So this is where Flask Migrate will help us do that. But first, let's create the migration file. So we're going to say flask db, and then we're going to say migrate. And you can also specify the migration name. And here I'm going to say initial migration. You don't need to do this, but if you want to add a specific name to your migration file, you can this way. So I'm going to close this close my database and here within my migrations and within my versions, here we have our first migration file. So we have a couple of variables here and a couple of functions. So here, this is the revision. You should never change this here. None of these things you should change. The only things you can change are within here and here. Most of the times you won't need to, that's why uh, Flask Migrate is so useful because it detects your tables through your models and your columns and it creates, it does all the heavy lifting for you. So in this case, it realized that we want a users table and the specific columns and primary keys and unique constraints. And as a down migration is if you roll back, it will drop the database table. So I'm going to close this for now. And here I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to say flask db and then upgrade. This is for applying your migrations. So I'm going to run this. 
So if we go to our database and we refresh, here we have users. We also have a Lempic version. I'm going to tell you exactly what that is in just a second. So if we head here, we have our columns, ID, name, email, and age. So it has created our users table exactly like we wanted it. So if we head to Alembic version, this is a database table with just a single column called version number. And this is for um, Flask Migrate and also Alembic to track um, at what migration version you are currently at. So in this case, it knows that this is the current version, but we only have one and it's applied. So if I close this and I go back, okay, I close this one as well. So where do we head from here? So here, what you can do is you can, for example, add a new column. So here I'm going to say username and I'm going to say db. So I'm going to copy this here, this one here. So I'm going to say username and then here I'm going to say nullable is equal to false because we always want it. And you know what? the name should be non-nullable as well. So I'm going to say nullable is equal to false. So if we head to our terminal and we say flask db migrate, what this will do is we, it will create an additional migration because it has detected changes from looking at the previous migration file and our models files. So if we head here, it has detected that on the users table, we want to add a column called username and we also want to alter a column called name and we want to set it nullable to false. And also it has added the downgrade commands. So I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to say flask db upgrade. So it has run that migration. So if we head to our database, to our tables and we head to users columns. So if we refresh this, it has added a username column as well as made the name column non nullable. Okay. So this is how Flask migrate works. DB downgrade and it will do the reverse. So in this case, if we had here, the downgrade was to alter the name and make it nullable to true and also drop the column. So if we had here and we refresh, the name has become nullable and the username has gone. So yeah, this is how you use Flask Migrate. I hope you have enjoyed this video and if you have, please like, comment and share this video as this helps the channel grow so I can keep making these videos. I upload new videos every week about Python and Flask so if you want to get notified when I do, please subscribe as well as click the notification bell so you can be notified whenever a new video is released. Thank you and see you in the next one.